Hey! I'm muting the mic! Welcome back to the booth. <laughs> it's the old Cranky Man Collectibles Team Trios qualifier here at Game Castle in Ankeny. <laughs> we are gearing up for round three covering modern. We've got a doozy this round. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is um, sort of sort of one of my favorite decks in the format right now. Really, um, D- domain domain zoo. Okay, is such a it's such a wild deck because it wasn't a real deck for a long time. I mean, there's always been iterations of zoo. Yes, but the re- like triumphs, getting the full yes. suite of triumphs. No, nope, you're not wrong about that. And leyline binding have made the deck so good in how efficient the removal is. And uh, and how easy it is to hit every so for a long time we utilized a lot of these bad enchantments to make your lands every land type, um, or you just and, fed shocked yourself yourself to yeah, death, or just yeah it, the, the the format was too fast and now it takes basically no energy. No, what you're the other deck. You're, yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, so it's Team of Rhinos or sorry, uh, Domain Zoo versus Team of Rhinos. Team of Rhinos. Yep. Which is sort of the there's there's sort of two different cascade decks in the format that are pretty dominant right now. Yep. Um, one one of which is this list, which yep plays a cascade spell. So into... um, I will tell you that this team, as this is a team event, is currently two zero. Right. So both of their modern players have not won a game yet. They haven't won a game yet? Not the modern players. Oh, the, interesting. Both, both the Pioneer and the Leg- Legacy players for each uh, e- each team have 2 0 their They're matchups. But the modern is but the, mo- the, the modern seats are both 0-2. Can I tell you how much I love Team Trios? How, how you can just carry your, your, your teammates. And then later on, like they may just be well-positioned and do extremely well. Sure, sure, um, sure, sure. The, the problem with, well... Domain Zoo runs some of the weirdest forms of removal in the form of, like, it has super weird removal and super weird threats. Territorial Kavu, sort of one of the newer ones. Yeah. Um, we've gotten going here. Team of Rhinos on the top. Um, they're, they're sort of just trying to get to three mana, yep. right? He, well, he started with the Gemstone Caverns. You see it there yeah. on the screen. Uh, Gemstone Caverns into an island, and then we see a Savai tri- a Triumph yeah. from uh, Domain was he, Zoo was there. Was that natural played? Gemstone Caverns, though? No, he started with the Gemstone Caverns. Oh, in so play. he's on the play. Or he's on the draw. He's on the draw, yes. It does. I didn't see the counter on it, so... It does have the luck counter it on it. Okay. Yep. Dude. So Gemstone Caverns, you can start with it in play <laughs> if, you're on the if draw. it's in your opening seven and you did not go first. That What a what a land. Uh, and then you'll see at the bottom there, uh, Team of Rhinos. It now has all five, all five basic lands. land types. And... It, and and Still playing, and so it's a five five for two mana. That territorial kagu, that card has attack triggers. So we yes, we it. were just we were just talking about territorial kagu, um, it, unrelated. We were talking yeah. about territorial kagu in um, Canadian Highlander, correct? And how I had never like actually seen this card before. It's, I knew that it was like a star star for for two mm-hmm. and, and it had some other kinds of text or something, but I never actually read what the card did. Yeah. It's a doozy. Traditional Modern Horizons 2 card, right? Like, and it looks like Jeff does not have the third land there. Oh, rough. So um, he's gonna so back to Domain Zoo. Domain Zoo's gonna come across for five. What a what a chunk of life. Just yeah. like immediately off the top. Yep. Taking five out. And getting getting two triggers, able to either rummage or exile a card from the graveyard. Yep. Jeff did buy a turn by icing it down, but still unable to come still, up with that. Jeff still does not have the the third land there. That's rough. So he's just going to have to pass back. It's hard to not keep the opening hand with the gemstone mine and the or gemstone cavern and the, the and the island because it's sort of like two colors. You're sort of you have the ice in hand. You're hoping to ice out you know the third land. I think we drew it. I think we drew the third land. We got the third is. land. So, there it is. It's Scalding Tarn. Scalding Tarn. So the, now the question is, um, does cascading into two rhinos actually do anything here? I, I think so, the answer is yes. He'll put eight power on board. It does do something. It will allow him to block. Uh, his opponent likely have a removal spell to finish off one of the, one of the, one of the rhinos. One of the rhinos. Or uh, a removal spell to prevent him from being able to block properly. Yeah. Uh, you know, domain having access to some some removal that is situationally odd, but because of the because of domain how it functions, 
like Tribal Flames is a sorcery that deals X damage to target creature or player where X is them a basic right. types you control. Two mana lava axe. Two mana lava axe. <laughs> so good. Or the Leyline Bindings now, which is another domain card with flash. Sure. It's basically a one mana, a one mana spell that exiles a permanent. Uh, not mine permanent, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's so much good removal that Domain has got recently. Yeah. And so many good threats, especially the territory of Kavu. Um, Wild Nakatl, still playable, 2023. Uh, uh, looks like the Kavu is going to come into the red zone here. We're going to see Jeff crack that Scalding Tar, and he's going down to nine. Uh, Cascade spell Cascade incoming? Spell, yeah. Cascade spell, yeah. Cascade spell incoming. Probably the, the uh, what's it, the... The creature. Uh, we we are in the middle of Chris's combat step here, so he will not be able to cast a creature spell. No, it has splash though, right? The it does shardless, shardless agent. agent does not, shardless agent does not. It does have not have flash. Okay, no. so it's just a uh, what's it? it's the fury. Oh my gosh, anger! <laughs> violent outburst. <laughs> it's violent outburst. If I could remember the the cascade spell. Violent yeah. Outburst. So Violent Outburst is going to cascade into Crashing, crashing Footfalls falls. here. Yeah. Jeff's going to make a couple of Rhinos, and it looks like a Stubborn Denial from Chris here is going to get countered by a Force of Negation from Ooh, Jeff. By pitching a Murktide region. So he is going to get his Rhinos, I believe. He has so many cards in hand, I think it's totally reasonable to pitch to that force. Which, that's something that happens when you, mm -hmm. when, you know, when you have a full, you know, when, when, you, when, you're, when you're missing land drops, you can just keep drawing cards and adding cards to your hand, you're, yeah. you're going to have a full grip full of cards. It, it, I wonder if he's going to double block here. Uh, um, so, if he shows him a removal spell before combat, mm -hmm. um, things are not looking good. Yeah. Of course, uh, Jeff, not sure what he has in hand. Uh, per perhaps he has more uh, Cascade action so he can make some more Rhinos, but Rhinos is definitely one of those decks that, like, once it gets going, yeah. it, 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 is, it is kind of hard to slow down. Quick question. Yes. Okay, the way that Violent Outburst, Outburst works is it goes on the stack the Rhinos resolved, and then the Violent Outburst resolved. Correct. So these are 5-4 Rhinos. These are 5-4 Rhinos. So these rhinos. can eat... The Kavu. They can. Even okay. Kavu, yes. That is a very important delineation right yes. now. Yes. He is. You see him there with the double block. Yeah. He's just making sure. Okay. So potentially removal spell here. Um, uh, he has tapped and untapped that sacred foundry several <laughs> times here. Uh, I'm not sure if he actually has the removal spell or if he's just trying to gas him up, make him think that he does. There is a Leyline Binding going to okay, come down yeah, and exile is. one of the Rhinos. Yeah. Leyline Binding, another sweet pickup for these five color decks. Yeah, Dominary United. Um, sort of bringing back Domain as a, yeah. as a keyword. Yep. Uh, so the other Rhino going to trade in combat there. Yeah. It Honestly, it's not bad for Jeff to trade for that, right? Like... He got to no, I don't threat. think he got so. To remove a removal spell. He, he also hand. got the stubborn denial out of his opponent's yes. hand, and I, I believe Jeff still has four cards in his hand and three mana. Right. So, so he gets to he gets right. to Rhino again. If he does have, uh, looks like a tribal flames is going to put Jeff down to four. And if he gets to Rhino again, he might be able to claw his way back into this. Not sure how many cards Chris has in his hand. He might just fire up a sharpless agent here. Uh, here is a. Season Pyromancer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the original printing, too. I I haven't seen this card in, in some of these lists before. I know it's a totally reasonable include for the for the Rhinos lists, um, especially just to get rid of some of the chat from hand that's not doing a lot. Yeah. Um, the Rhinos specifically. Like, if you have Crashing Footballs in hand, yep. it's kind of garbage, right? You want it in deck. Uh, I mean, I would suspend a Crashing You'd Footballs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not opposed to, sus to suspending a footballs. I think he needs to do something now, though. Sure. And and Pyromancer representing effectively four power for one card. Yep. And for three mana, and then getting to refill after that. Yep. I like that. It sort of reestablishes a board for him, whereas Chris is, has nothing in hand. The issue is that Jeff is at four, and then, yeah, he got to... Um, he, got, he just got to kill him with another... Uh, another another tribal flames. flames. Yeah, yep. uh, it's yep. Cleaning up. Going to go to game two here. Um, so 
what are what are sideboard options here for these players? I feel like this matchup is is probably pretty close. Um, I think the domain deck goes up counter magic. Oh, okay. the, the domain deck has counter spells it can bring. Yes. In. in addition to stubborn denial, what are we gonna, what are we going to see? Um, we might see uh, Teferi Time Raveler as in there, but we could just see like. Some amount of we if he has to fairy time raveler yeah. in his sideboard he will most certainly bring that yes. in because it turns off the ability to cascade uh, fluster storm sort of a sort of an, an interesting include we've seen in this deck because it while it doesn't necessarily deal with everything mm. sometimes all you need is that one push and especially sure. in a cascade deck you're automatically getting additional copies of storm and you can and you can effectively counter both. The uh, the cascade spell and the spell and the spell cascading itself. Into. Pretty easy two for one there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we go up force of negation or anything. I don't know if that deck runs that because it's sort of heavy on other colors. Sure. Um, but Fluster Storm almost feels like an easy include to Fairy Time Raveler. To Fairy Time Raveler seems perfect because it turns yeah. off Cascade. It turns off Cascade. It allows him to even if you come in after the Cascade, you can bounce the Rhino back to hand. Sure. Basically removes it from the game, replaces itself in hand. Yep. yep. Crashing Footfall. So let's talk about Rhinos. What's it bringing in? Um. So, I mean, it looks like. Uh, Maybe maybe if he's got Fury in his sideboard, mm -hmm. uh, Blood Moon most certainly. Yeah, if he has Blood Moon in his sideboard. Sort of an easier um, include, right? Yeah, it's pretty easy to bring <laughs> to bring Blood Moon in against these five color decks. Um, they do have some amount of basic land, so we um, saw it. Yeah, it, hopefully, you know, he will be able to maneuver into a position where he can still play a game of Magic. You know, and the Blood Moon won't just completely shut him down. But I think it's it's always a possibility. It that, can, but you're playing it, so you kind of control. How like the sequencing is sort of yours to control. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it can just. It's hard because and on the on the play here, um, Jeff won't be able to sneak out that gemstone cavern. So it's not like he can drop down, you know, a turn two blood moon and, and right. really get him. Um, but uh, what what are other what are other options out of the sideboard of um, the rhino stick the rhino specifically? Stick. Um, for this matchup, you could run... Um, I think Beseju seems okay. I don't know if I would bring it in. It can take them off of their three-color lands. You can. Um, so you could, like, you could do something really tricky, like, you know, shrink a Kavu in the middle of combat, or, um, like, shrink a... Do, does Tribal Flames count when it resolves? Yes. Or, so you could shrink a Tribal Flames, mm. potentially. I don't, I don't know if that's good, per se. Mystical but... Dispute, probably. Like, if especially if we're seeing, like... Um, blue spells that we're trying to get. Um, I don't know if Mystical Dispute is something that you would want against against the against the Tribal Flames deck. Yeah, it's. I, I guess it, it it goes to if you believe they're going to bring in the counter magic against you. It's mm. sort of like the sideboard against the sideboard. You already have uh, quite a bit of counter play for that. I yeah. think. I think Blood Moon's sort of just the the easier bring yeah. in. Yeah, Blood Moon. What Everything are, else appears to be like. Mostly attacking graveyards, mostly attacking uh, artifacts. Cool, cool, uh, cool. Right, well, we're, we're getting we, back here. we will see exactly what these players have in store for Rhinos game two. Yep, Rhino's on the play. Uh, he does have a Blood Moon in his hand. You can see it right there. Yeah, I think it's... it's so he's probably checking with his teammate on whether or not that's a keep, right? Sure. So definitely did bring in the Blood Moon. Um that really ranches a good portion of the domain plan. Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, especially if you know if if you if you can catch Chris where he's in an unfortunate situation. Like sometimes in these five color decks, you have the ability to kind of fetch basics. Your deck is forgiving, and in, in whatever your draw is, you can uh -huh. you can fetch basics and you can take your times. Sometimes, but especially when uh, you know the five color deck has to mulligan. He's suspending a, a oh, uh, just suspending the rhinos. He's suspending right a rhinos. So uh, especially when they have to mulligan, the way that they fetch becomes much less forgiving. They have to be really greedy, and that's when you can really capitalize with the blood oh. moon and really and really punish them for that. So we'll see what kind of sort draw. Of broadcasting the blood moon here by getting the forest, I think. Uh, yep, yeah, and I mean, I think I think if you're Chris, you're probably you're probably going to do your best to try to play around Blood Moon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, you know, with these the, these uh, Cascade decks that can only play things with converted mana cost three or greater, uh, they're really limited on options. So, right. like, like they're they're 
they're kind of like, you know, basically blocked into having a Blood Moon in their sideboard because it's the best thing that they can do on three mana against a five color deck, right? Sort of explains some of the uh, sideboard tech that we've seen where it's super limited. It's hard for them to sort of yes. more situational cards because it's like two mana or less. Yeah. Um, so and that's why Chris is, a lot of like, Chris is just going to play a yeah. Sabai Triome and pass back. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a bad choice to to suspend that Rhinos there, even if you're not, you know, oh yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, because... A hundred percent you suspend Crashing Footballs. Yeah, eventually... Just going to make some Rhinos. I don't even know that the that the Blood Moon is, is trying to necessarily shut off his game plan entirely, like kill his mana, as much as it is trying to turn off the domain portion of things. Yeah, like even if even if Chris it, can cast spells, that's okay. It just makes it hard. Yeah, it just makes it, yeah, it nerfs that's the, the idea. To, to uh, enough to that. He is game. he is not playing around the Blood Moon. No, at all. he is not. Um, he had the option there, I think, to go get a basic um, with that Flooded Strand. Depending upon what is in his hand, I don't know if he needs the green mana right now. But like, if he if his if he's if his goal here is to play a territorial Kavu, yeah, and you know your opponent is going to Blood Moon you next turn, I think it is just fine to wait a turn or wait until you have access to a forest to play the territorial Kavu. You could just go right. get your island, play the game. It's not like Jeff is putting any pressure on you. Exactly. He's he's, he's just three turns away. Yeah, he's right. he's going to allow this. Um, this Blood Moon to do a considerable amount of damage to him. Yeah, I, what I was sort of like even mentioning is like if you're Chris, you can kind of play around the Blood Moon because you're like kind of expecting it. Honestly, though, Chris might have a Visage in hand that we don't see. Sure. Yep, that's and a possibility. That's that's such a great counterplay to that because he can kind of be a little bolder in in how he fetches and sort of bait that out of uh, out of Jeff. To right, like have, him, have him spend his turn playing the Blood uh -huh. Moon only to just destroy it. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. That's it, It's sort of a reasonable counterplay, and and doing playing how he is playing right now almost, uh, almost signals that he has it too. So we have two players who are sort of like posturing in very specific ways yep. and positioning in very specific yep, and ways. You, you, wonder if, you wonder if the players at the table are actually picking up on that. Yeah, I kind of hope so. So... Yeah, uh, fetch shocking into the breeding pool and then just passing. Yeah, you're right. That yeah. is a pretty that is a pretty clear indicator that that he may or may not have the blood. Yeah, moon. Jeff fetching into the into the steam vents here. Uh, so if if your opponent um, is signaling you like this, are you just are you just cascading into rhinos here? Oh hell yeah! Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. If, yeah. If he's like if he's like waiting for me to blood moon, right? Then I'm going to put a threat in play that's going to kill you. Yeah, absolutely. Like I'll. I'll I'll play land pass and then end of turn. Uh, let's see if he moves. Yeah, here's three. Nope, oh, nope. It's a shardless agent. agent. Yeah, and this is exactly what we were talking that's, about. I that, think. Oh, he 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 hit the 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 crashing footfalls right off the top. Oh, uh, we got the denial. Yeah, we got a stubborn denial. That's to take honestly care of that. though, it's a two two. It's in play now. That's Jeff has a threat. Chris is sort of waiting right and, like and then in a couple more turns that other crashing footfalls is going to come off yeah. the suspend uh maybe maybe chris is just taking a little bit of a back foot here he's oh he's, yeah he's kind of uh you know trying to make make jeff play the game in his way and if chris ever taps out then jeff basically has free reign to deploy the blood moon so they're so they're both sort of posturing they're both sort of positioning and okay so we've got the territorial Kavu. territorial Kavu gonna come down so now this sort of gives Jeff the carte blanche and he has a tapped overgrown tomb if if you're Jeff you're you're blood mooning now right there's no way you're not um it cuts me off of blue mana of course the scalding turn right here to get is gonna go find blue mana so um, he uh, Chris could have a force of negation I suppose. We talked about like potentially bringing in counter magic for counter magic. So a, for, a force of negation here would stop the blood moon, but I, but I have a feeling that um, if this is if this blood moon resolves here, uh, it, it's going to be lights out for Chris. Yeah, it's going to turn his copy into a one one. <laughs> yep, and um, unless he just naturally draws some basic lands, it's yeah. going to be really hard for him to. Um, yeah, and there's no play. Yeah, and I mean, he saw the Blood Moon come in there. He, he was reaching for the dice before the thing even hit the table. Yeah. Uh, I I probably would have swung with the Sharpless Agent there if I'm Jeff, but... Uh, I don't know. We're at parity here. There's yeah. there's no reason to expose okay, yourself, I guess. So, in uh, hand from Chris. Uh, yeah, so, a Plains does come a plains, down. 
for turning that Kabu, Kabu into a 2-2. Two, two. Do, you, do you swing in with the Kabu to go for the... Oh, you got a tribal bolt or a lightning bolt. Yep, lightning bolt is going to take out the Lightning does not turn agent. off lightning bolts. It does not, no. <laughs> Lightning bolt, one of the best cards in the game. Uh, and Kabu swinging in for two. Jeff is just going to have two 4-4 four, four threats in the next turn unless... Yeah, I don't think Chris has blue mana, does he? No, there's a tribal flames. Uh, tribal flame. Oh, he dis he looted it away yeah, with the territorial kabu. Yeah, that's totally reasonable. It, I don't think it's doing much in in this context, right? Like two mana for two damage. Probably not the greatest. Yeah, Je Jeff definitely having having a more impactful game here. That was a split card. There. It's a what boom bust. A boom bust. I uh, yeah, that's... No, no not boom wear bust. Tear, I think. No, it's not wear tear. It's red. It's Both sides are red. Oh. I have no idea. One, one side of it is... Um, gosh, I cannot remember what the name of that card is. So the Crashing Footfalls does come off of Suspend there. Puts two Rhinos into play. And it does not look like Chris has. It is dead and gone. Dead and gone. That's what yeah, it is. Dead and gone. <laughs> not boom bust. Yeah, Jeff. Jeff having those rhinos. Does those rhinos have haste too? I don't believe so. I thought that they did. Do they? Is that how that's how cascade, cascade works? works with creature? No, not that, cascade, but suspend works with creatures and it gives. That, them yeah, that's how that's how suspend works, right? Yeah, I believe it gives. So I believe they do have a haste. violent outbursts going to cascade into more rhinos, and I think this uh, probably just spells lights no, out I for the suit player. They just have trample. Yeah, it's. Sort of a weird thing, because suspend creatures... When haste. a creature comes off of suspend, it gains haste, right? Yes. So these are token, tokens, tokens are not the same. Yeah, very, very unusual. But, like, what a card. Now, I'm not great at math, but 4 times 4... 16. 16. That's, uh, that's just one shy. It is just one shy. But there are pump spells. <laughs> uh, not playing it. Okay. Taking him to one. Let's see what let's see what Chris can do here. I have a feeling we are going to go to game three. I agree. <laughs> I concur. I concur. What what a performance from Jeff! And honestly, suspending that turn one crash in footballs really made a difference here, right? Yeah, I believe it did. Yes. You don't, you don't have to just cast it. And sometimes you can. You he played the control game here a little bit with that blood moon, sort of waiting for him. We're dashing a ragaman. Oh, dashing a ragaman, hoping to hit something off the top. We're, we're dashing a ragaman. It's a stomp. It's a well. It's, it's uh, a blocker, effectively. It's a blocker, but looks like he'll still take twelve after he makes the treasure token. Twelve more than one. Something like an engineered explosives would have been pretty hot. Yeah. So we've got a saga coming. Of course, forward. definitely no engineer explosives in Jeff's deck. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, that's that. You you don't want to hit that. Hit it. Suga's consumes all was the was the spell that the saga that got got played there. Uh, destroy each non land permanent with mana value one or less is the first chapter on that. So that did wipe the board. Oh wow! Yeah, and then chapter two is exile all graveyards. Um, and then on the backside it becomes just a beefy body. It turns into a three three with trample. Um, Hide it, Sugu consumes all. You can see it on your screen there. That's a fantastic board wipe in this matchup. Uh, and and Jeff, Jeff, on on when he passed back, immediately coming back. Yeah, he, uh, he plays another shardless agent, gets more rhinos into play. Yeah. Saga going to go up to two here, which is going to exile all, all plays gra all players' graveyards. Yeah. It might be a little too little too late. Uh, Jeff just needing a fire and ice, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, it okay, looks like we're going to scoop up. him up and go to game three here. Whew, what a what a match so far, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really, really kind of seeing what both decks are capable of. I love uh, that. I really, I really like how, you know, the domain, the domain zoo deck kind of, it kind of basically plays its very large threat. And then it just kind of sits behind this wall of like stubborn denials and, and, and things like that. And then it also has these really powerful burn spells that just, 
kind of finish the game out. It, yeah. it, it is very much, um, you know, reminiscent of like Counter Cat, which is the precursor to Domain Zoo, right? right? Yeah, 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 so yeah. you would play your Wild Nacatl, and then you would have Spell Pierce. Oh, yeah. To, you know, to protect your Wild Nacatl. One of the original band cards from Modern, right? It, was yeah, Nacatl, yeah. Yes, yeah. It very much reminds me of Counter Cat. So you also had, um, you also had Tribal Flames in that deck as yes. well. Yes, yep. And uh, I just, just love those old, those old modern decks. Uh, this was a deck that also played so Geist of Saint Traft. So <laughs> the the boomer oh. the boomer modern player to be really coming Did out and showing an expert but, that makes angels. But I, you know I I got I gotta love the Tribal Flame deck and really seeing the power of the Domain Zoo it's deck. One of the few one of the few decks that have cards that they four of exclusively can just totally go the distance on their own. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. like you no nope, Bolt doesn't do it. Yep. Not even like a Galv Blast, does it? Yep. So I know that they've got the Territorial Kabu. I'm assuming that they have Wild Nakato. Please tell me they're playing Wild Oh, 100%, Nakato. yes. What are the other threats that this deck gets to play now? So Ragavan, pretty easy. Ragavan, yep. Uh, Nishobi Brawler, I've seen in a couple. Ooh, Nishobi Brawler. Yeah, it's a two-mana... What is that? It's a two-mana star three with Trample, whose power is equal to the number of basic land types. So it's basically a two-mana five-three Trample. Wow. Uh, and then one of my favorites from Modern Horizons 2, Scion of Draco. Yes. It's a 12 mana 4-4 four, four flyer that costs two less for each basic land. So you can play it for two. You it's a 4-4 four, four for two. For two. And then it also has text where it gives your yeah. white creatures vigilance yeah. and it gives your blue creatures fly. Hexproof. Hexproof. Sure, sure, sure. Black is lifelink. Red is first strike and green is trample. Yes, that's a very sweet card. Yeah, it's we are we are back down here with the players now. Both players kept seven. Uh, Chris starting with a tap Savai Triome on turn two. He's got a territorial Kavu. We're back on Jeff's turn right wow. now. He's got a looks what like an opener. looks like a Ketria Triome in play here. Uh, just a grip full of cards. I see a Brazen Borrower. I see a Force of Negation. I see a Fire Ice. That's a lot of. Yeah, and I mean, the, the Team of Rhydos deck is... Earlier when we in round one we were watching Merfolk play, I was talking a lot yeah. about tempo. Yes. Right? Yes, yes, and, yes, yes. And, and Team of Rhydos is really the tantamount, the tantamount tempo deck of the format. Mm -hmm. you, just, you just get to play one, two, sometimes three spells a turn and, and, and deal with your opponent's things one at a time, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and you, you get to keep you know, refilling your hand. You've got a grip full of cards. Basically, every card replaces itself. Or, like, it's it's not even that you're even spending a card, right? It, right. The cascade basically, like, doesn't even require you to right. spend basically a card. Right, basically, each card just replaces itself. Yeah, is what it is what it more. amounts to. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and, like, the threats that are generated are so good and so little investment yep. that you almost don't care if they're... Yep, I really like the addition of Shardless Agent, the addition oh, of Shardless yeah. Agent to Modern here, because it kind of turns your... It, it turns your Shardless Agent into four bodies. If it was, like, ten mana, mm -hmm. uh, eight of that has Trample for, for just three mana. Yeah. And at, at the cost of, you have to build your deck in a specific way. Which, in, in Modern, not that hard. Like, not that difficult, right? No, I don't think so. It, it basically... And it's almost like one of those things where the deck building, uh, the deck building restraint, I, I'm going to say this in heavy quotes, constraints of requiring you to add blue is like the correct way to do it. Like so, the, the correct way to build this deck is with blue. Sure. <laughs> like, like if yeah. you're not playing it with blue, if you're just playing the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the three man, the violent outburst. Like you're doing it wrong. You do see the scion of Draco. It is hit. It is hit oh, the table so there uh, for Chris. Uh, and then a brazen borrower is going to bounce the territorial Kavu. Uh, we see an engineered explosives for zero coming okay. down yeah. on Chris's side of the battlefield. Smart. Yeah, you get to just take out all the rhinos. You're you're kind of just daring Jeff to over. Oh, and the force. It's, of It is it is met with a force of negation from yeah. Jeff. Smart. That Scion's still still a good threat, right? And and notably not dependent on own. We've got the we've got the the Shardless Agent. Yep, here. Shardless Agent is going to come down. Yeah. We've got two four fours coming. Uh, hopefully, I'm I'm suspecting Jeff didn't accidentally put a lightning bolt in his deck. <laughs> How unfortunate that would be. Uh, yeah, the, we're just wow. It must be buried here. There it is. Um. The nice thing about Scion of Draco is because it's just discounted on the front, there's never any counterplay once it's in play, right? Unless they remove it. It's not like the Territorial Kabu or the Wild Nakatl 
where blood mooning them reduces the overall size. Oh, of yeah, yeah, yeah. It's big, it's in play, and that's it. It's a four yep. forward evasion that does a great thing for the rest of your team. Yep, absolutely. But generally speaking, it's just like, it's just a great body for on rate. Yeah, I'll take a two mana four four flyer. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, that like has upside. It's like Modern Horizons traditional cards, right? Okay, so we still have we still have that Brazen Borrow on an adventure that potentially could block the Scion if we needed to. Uh, but just having these threats in play now kind of forces Chris to do something about it. Um, he can he can spend some mana on a Leyline Binding. Um, honestly, though, he's sort of cut on mana right now. It, or he, That is to say, Jeff is outclassing him on mana um, in that he's getting so much value out of what he has in play. Yep, I, I think that Chris was probably banking a whole bunch on that Engineered Explosives being yeah. able to clean up here, and the Force of Negation really kind of he just might have another that out. Um, and... and the Team of Rhinos deck's ability to just put a whole bunch of power on the battlefield in one turn uh, kind of just turns the corner very, very quickly. Yeah, agreed. Um, I think Chris is definitely hoping for another Engineered Explosives um, or just uh, bodies to eat those Rhinos, right? Ter two Territorial Kavus would, would really be... Yeah, valuable. sure, absolutely. Um, he does have, sort of have like, oh, there's a Kabu. Like there I said, is a territorial Kabu a right five there. Five. So it is a 5-5. Five, five. Going to be able to block these uh, these rhinos. At least one of them, yeah. And he's sort of well. him, right? Like, he's got four power in the air. Um, it, it feels very much like they're they're kind of circling each other, seeing who, have, who has more counterplay, because they're both leaving mana up. We can see Jeff has a Fire Ice in hand. He's got a Fury in hand. He's got two copies of Fire Ice, a Fury, and I'm not sure what that other copy is, that yeah. other card is. It's a he has a Crashing Footfalls in hand. That's the front card. Oh, okay. And so he's got sorry. The, the it's dead a, and gone. It's dead and gone. Fire oh. Ice, Crashing Footfalls, Fury. Yeah. So one of the big changes to the rules, which is we consider the the mana value of split cards as a combined. Yes. Has really made this deck better, also because yes. you get to run these split cards. Yep. Uh, that are effectively, and like, the same goes for Brazen Bar, right? Where it's a two-mana spell. Right. But it's a three-mana creature. It's a three-mana card, yeah. Yeah. It's it's so neat how this deck kind of co congealed eventually mm -hmm. with these cards that sort of, like, allow you to play around the the restriction on yep. the deck building. So he's got this Fire Ice here. I think he's thinking about tapping down that Territorial Cod. I don't so, hate that. So that he can get in. Even... Because, like, even if it's just a race... Uh, well, um, I believe that uh, if if his opponent has a Stubborn Denial, it will kind of be a waste of a card. Okay. He is far enough ahead here that there's probably not a huge incentive to just spending the card. Yeah. Um, he can fire this territory to Kavu now, though. Right, finish it off with the fire. Yeah. One to the Kavu, one to your dome. Take... Six. Or he can, like, he just needs another Cascade spell, honestly. He's at 15. It's such a healthy life total that even if he takes nine, I think it, uh, four, five, six, you know, he, he could maybe be able to go the distance. Um. <laughs> Card sideways. Yeah, he's, uh, he's really just trying to figure out what he wants to do with his turn. It looks like he's just going to go ahead and pass back. Decides to not finish off that Territorial no. Kavu with the fire. That's fine. Uh, instead, maybe opting to do it at instant speed, perhaps. Or uh, tap it down, draw a card. That, uh, it, the so, Brazen Borrower acts as an instant speed blocker to the... It, it does, but I think in this position, we are maneuvering to try to win this game next turn. Okay, yeah, that so, makes more sense. So, waiting to see what his opponent does... Um, you know, if he's just going to send with his creatures and pass back, it might be okay to fire off the fire ice at the end of turn, tap your guy down, present lethal, uh -huh. um, and, and, you know, we'll go from there. I would let him go to combat. But if we have the ability to pay, uh, you know, play at instant speed, why not play at instant speed? Yeah, I agree. He did, Jeff did let him go to combat. Um, yeah, and so he's not attacking him lethal here, where, yeah. whereas... Um, 
Jeff has the potential to have lethal. Yeah, it's... It does put him dead on board next turn. Uh, if if he doesn't have the blockers, what is he casting there? Oh, I think that's the uh, that's the domain card, the the five through with trample, the Nishobi brawler. Nishobi brawler. Yeah, this is the card I talked about. It's it's such a good uh, such a good beat stick to go the distance because it has trample. It's hyper efficient. Yep. Um, it's a newer one. Nishoba. Nishoba Brawler. Nishoba. Uh, two yeah, mana, Nishoba. star three, a trample, powers. domain. Its power is equal to the number of basic land types of the land. Yeah. No, it's just a 5 3 it's trampler. Five, three. Yeah, and the, the trample is super important. So, uh, Brazen Borrower in play here now means that he is representing lethal. Yeah, so he can, he can ice it down. So, if he can ice down this yeah. Nishoba, Nishoba Brawler here, um, that's going to be lights out. This is uh, sort of something. What you're talking about. Yep, this is exactly what I was talking about. So, uh, something like a stubborn denial here, or a counter spell, something like that. They could could they could kind of break this up. So, but he doesn't feel bad about main phasing the fire ice here because no. if his opponent has the counter spell, sure, he gets in for three with the flyer. He holds back his blockers. It was always going to happen, right? Right. Like making him spend the counter magic isn't a bad thing, right? Main phase it. <laughs> if your opponent has the counter spell, sure, hold off. Get in there with the brazen borrower, uh, and, and and move on from there. He he put himself in a position where he has lethal on board. Now he just has to make his opponent have it. Yeah, what a what a great match. We're seeing a fury evoke. Yeah, he's evoking the fury here. That's going to take out the Nishoba brawler, sort of making him have. Oh, so we're baiting, right? But so it's not even a bait. Like we have to have it. Force of negation and stubborn denial both do nothing here. Yeah, because it's a creature. Yeah, so he's able to clear the board now. What a heads-up play from Jeff. Because he could have iced there. Yes. But playing a round of Force of Negation. Oh, we've got a mana coming down. Is it uh, a path? I believe it's a Leyline Binding. Leyline Binding? Yep. Yeah, he's counting it. That's lethal. Do we have a, a, a counter spell for this? I do not believe he does, no. Okay, so what are we taking? The so they, that's going to get the Rhino out of the way. Uh, he's going to take up. five and go down to four. Woo! And he still has the ability to ice one of uh, Chris's creatures. Yep, go to untap, ice your creature, take four from Scion, go to two. What, what an absolute back and forth match here. Yeah, it's really been a slugfest. I love this. Like, if, if anything represents modern right now, if anybody is confused about, like, what the state of modern <laughs> is right now, it's exactly this. Where people people look at modern, they think turn three, turn four format. No, it's... Uh, we just have a... Oh! There's the fluster storm you were talking about, and Nailed that's it. gonna be the end of the game. Yep. Domain Zoo is gonna take it down in what? three. <sighs> wow. Definitely, definitely put up the starts and just held behind those those counter magic and fluster storm very hard to deal with. Yep. Because once it's it's effectively always the pay two, right? Sure. Because it it counts the spell that it's countering and itself, you know, in storm count. Yes, um, it is it is always a spell pierce. It is always a spell pierce. Yes. And sometimes it is a it, it's a full on like uh you know uh mana leak. Yep. Like for one. Sure. Which is insane. And I think it was the absolute correct to bring in here. What, what a great match. Yeah, we're going to take a real quick commercial break, uh, see if we can get another feature match, and uh, we will be right back. Thanks, everybody. This.